Hello students, welcome to the first RoboGuide tutorial. I'm going to step you through how to do RoboGuide labs 8 and 9. So what you want to do first is to get on um, Blackboard, go into course content, and then scroll down to module 3. So module 3 frames and motion programs. There's some materials in here that you need to review. Um, first and down <clears throat> toward the bottom first of all obviously you need to have RoboGuide installed to do these labs so you'll find the installation um, file for it here under this item called RoboGuide for students and there's also a PowerPoint that uh, explains how to do the installation um, RoboGuide as it says here will work for 30 days without a license and but before that time I'm going to transfer RoboGuide licenses to you to your computers so we'll be able to use it throughout the term <clears throat> um, the demo video actually I'm doing it right now so that's why it says coming soon um, so you go down to RoboGuide cert labs 8 and 9 and the first thing you want to do is open up this work cell so you just click on this LRMate 200ID 830.zip <clears throat> and it should come up here and after it finishes loading so now you're gonna if you open it from Windows make sure you you have to unzip it to work on it so you got to take that LRMate 200 ID 830 and drag it <clears throat> I just put it on my desktop you know bring it put it someplace where you know you're, you're gonna be able to find it okay so once you've loaded it onto your desktop go and open it up and the folder should look like this the thing you want to do is double click this icon that says LRMate 200 ID 830 and that should open up the work cell it takes a little while to open up because it's a pretty large program <clears throat> This is what RoboGuide is going to look like when you first open it up, when you open up that work cell. The first thing you should do before you do anything else is to save this under a different name from the standard name that, that I gave it, LRMate 200 um, 830 So if you go to the file menu and go to save cell as, <clears throat> first thing is let's change the path that it's going to save at. I'm going to go to um, just put it right on the desktop. I, it'll probably default to put it into a My Work Cells folder, which is fine as long as you know where it is and where you can find it. I'm just going to stay with the desktop because it's just it's right there. And all I'm going to do is add my name to this. You can, however you want to do this, is fine. The key is that you make sure you name it something that you can recognize and that you don't confuse it with any other Work Cells. Um, I also recommend once you save it to delete the original one that you downloaded just so you're not uh, getting confused going back between the two. You can always get the original one if you need it again, if you need it to start over. Uh, it's always on Blackboard. So what happens when you save it is actually it rebuilds the whole work cell uh, under the new name in a new folder. and. <clears throat> So it takes a little while to start back up again. It goes through all this simulated startup process for the robot. All right, so you just click OK here. And here we are. So this is what the work cell looks like when you open it up. What we're going to do instead of Lab 7, which is on creating a tool frame we're going to put a virtual tool onto this it's just going to be a pointer so it'll give us something to work with so the first thing and this is uh, the procedure is written out here in blackboard this whole thing right here so I'm just going to go through that so you go to the cell brow browser down to robot controllers and open this up and go to tooling and so where it says UT1, that's user tool one, left click that and 
go to tooling library and down to pointers and there's only one pointer so we click OK and there it is all right so we've got a pointer but now we have to set the tool center point so it it goes to the tip of that pointer so we're going to do this using the direct entry method and going back to blackboard it says here that the tool center point is going to be exactly 178 millimeters straight out from the tool face plate so to bring up the teach pendant there's an icon here it says show hide teach, teach pendant and that will bring the teach pendant up now if the teach pendant comes up looking like this this is the old style teach pendant i recommend you use the i pendant just click the ip i pendant and also helps if you put it in its own window so you can move it around a little more freely All right, so to set up the tool um, frame, I'm going to just close this cell browser, go to menu, set up frames, and it's already it's already in the tool frame window. So we're just going to hit enter. We're on tool frame one, and we're just going to enter a 178 in the Z coordinate. Notice as soon as I did that, the tool center point moved to the end of the pointer. Okay, so we're all set with that. <clears throat> um, now I'm going to jog the um, pointer so it's pointing down. Generally, you want to start the program with the pointer pointing down. And so to do that, I've got to turn on the teach pendant. And I'm already in joint mode, so that's joint five. Oh, I went a little too fast, but that'll do. I'm going to knock the speed down 